Welcome back. I hope that uh, the breakout sessions, uh, uh, as well as the plenary of this morning, were uh, inspiring and interesting. Uh, we are approaching the end of uh, two very intense uh, days. Uh, and in this uh, final uh, wrap-up session, we don't have at all the ambition of uh, drawing any conclusions, but rather to collect some impressions, share with you some, uh, some thoughts, uh, uh, some final thoughts uh, about this uh, 2017 edition of uh, Translating Europe Forum. And uh, I'm doing this together with my colleague, Theodor Dritzas. Uh, Theodore, I guess I can still call you a translator after these two days. <laughs> so you are a translator working uh, at uh, the European Commission, but you have a bit of an unusual profile. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, thank you, Elisabetta. It's an honor to be here. Um, well, um, I belong to a minority in this room in the for the fact that I haven't studied translation at any level. Uh, I have, I'm an engineer by training, an electrical engineer. I, I've, doing, I've done a lot of microelectronics, solid state physics, material science. And then uh, I switched to, a big, did a big switch to philosophy. And I did a PhD in philosophy for quite a lot of years. Uh, in the meantime, I've been working as a translator, uh, translating uh, handbooks, uh, uh, but also academic texts and uh, sociology, or, and mainly working for the publishing sector. So I would say that uh, what is peculiar to me, but uh, it turns out to be a characteristic of every translator, uh, I got it by chance, others got it by training, is a combination of uh, humanities with uh, strong science that's a necessary element, I think, of, a, of an efficient translator. Yes, about it. indeed, thank <laughs> you. And indeed, this came out quite uh, often during these two days, this need of differentiate and have really a, a, a wide spectrum of, uh, of uh, competencies when, uh, when you work in translation. So the, the two days, as I said, were very intense. We had quite a lot of uh, interaction with the audience uh, via Twitter, via Slido, really a lot of, of impressions. Which uh, are your thoughts after these two days, uh, Theodore? Well, um, I sensed uh, some tensions. Uh, the most basic tension is quite obvious to all, I think, to between the machine translation and the and the traditional pen and pencil approach. Uh, these are two worldviews which uh, uh, I would say collide, but uh, necessarily create something new. Uh, and uh, we need, uh, as the colleague said uh, just before, on the previous session, we need to, uh, to agree on a common language and a common uh, um, a common framework on these two uh, approaches. Uh, another tension uh, that uh, I feel is uh, interrelated with the previous one is this one between uh, uh, academia and the market, and uh, that they both claim <laughs> they both claim in a sense that uh, they are uh, reality. They, uh, what is more real in translation, the market or the academia? So. Again, we have a, a clash and an uh, interrelatedness of uh, uh, two worldviews. Uh, another tension I sensed was between a holistic approach to translation and a breakdown of duties. Uh, as a matter of fact, in my everyday work in, uh, in DGT, I have to work, I have to do many duties. I am a terminologist, a reviewer, a translator. And, uh, of course, I manage projects in the low level that I work in. Uh, but, uh, on the other hand, uh, efficiency demands uh, specialization. So there is this uh, third tension. And, uh, above all, uh, let me state one more thought of mine, uh, that uh, we all sense that uh, translation is no longer a solitary endeavor. It's something that uh, happens in a community. It's a collective work. Uh, and um, if I 
could add one thought to everything that's been said is that uh, skills are very individualistic. The, they focus on the human person, but we have to see the framework into which uh, they can flourish. So we have to see both sides of the, of the coin. That's what I'd say. Okay, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts. Uh, I don't know if the slides are available that we, we prepared with the team. We um, looked at some of the, the most representative polls that were uh, launched yesterday. So I, can we show them? I just wanted to go through them once again with you before going back to, to slide for a, a, a couple of final questions. So can we have the slides? So you remember this very first question that we asked at the beginning of the day yesterday, so the skills that you would like to, to further develop. So indeed, their marketing, creativity, mother tongue were very, very strong uh, at the center of, of, of your reply. So keep this uh, in mind, because I will come back again to this and ask the same question in, in a moment. Maybe. Can we go on with the next? Uh, yes. Yes. What is the most uh, relevant skill a translator needs to thrive in today's business? You remember the question yesterday, and adaptability came out r really as a, as a, the, the most important ones. And we heard this again today, this morning, uh, uh, with this chameleon image. Uh, uh. Universities, so how should uh, university programs be structured? And here the uh, big majority indeed replied, go extracurricular and not just stick uh, to, to translation. And I think that's the last one. And what actually does the market prefer? And there, the reply is uh, to train uh, translators who know one or two domains, uh, rather than uh, uh, translate, uh, trained professional with the translation skills. So that was a bit the two sides of, of, of the coins. I don't know if you have any comment on this, uh, Theodore, on, on the different uh, replies. Uh, well, well uh, um, I, I would like to say something on adaptability, which uh, shows a fear of a changing environment and in which we have to adapt, because <laughs> there is a, the underlying threat that if you don't adapt, uh, you will perish, uh, and, uh, but this adaptability has a lot to do, uh, I would also say that it's a two-way uh, concept, that the, of course, individuals have to develop uh, skills and competences to fit into new frameworks, but uh, the frameworks should also be uh, suitable and allow people to allow the personal development of uh, of existing and uh, not being able to express the uh, capacities. Okay, thank you. And indeed, now if we go back to, to Slido, and I see that uh, the, the poll is active up there. So, uh, again, the same question after the second day. So, which is the, the, the skill that you would uh, like to further develop? And, and we see, indeed, a difference. Huh? Post-editing is uh, getting more, uh, more place uh, today. Digital skills, uh, creativity is still there. Corpora as well, and the networking. So you can still vote, I think, it's still active. What's your uh, impression, your thoughts uh, after the two days? Would you like to learn, develop some other skills compared to what you were thinking of developing yesterday? Was there a an evolution. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, well, post editing uh, is coming out uh, very, very strongly, and digital skills um, probably under the influence of of, of the discussions that uh, that we had today. So interesting to sh to see a bit the the shift over the the two days. Um, and back to you, uh, Theodore. So what will you bring back to your daily work in DG translation after these two days. So what is your takeaway? Yeah, well, uh, I would say that uh, uh, 
very important was the fact of uh, the skill of efficient research, uh, which is uh, replicated in the machine translation domain with the accumulation of data. But uh, from a human point of view, this uh, efficient research requires, of course, uh, a lot of creative thinking and critical thinking. So uh, these are two factors uh, which I consider important. And uh, another one is the teamwork and team spirit. And I would say that, uh, uh, that efficient teamwork isn't always, uh, isn't always uh, possible between individuals who have, have not, uh, have not uh, intent make uh, internal this uh, concept of uh, team play. So we don't need, uh, I would say that in, uh, in my everyday job, I try to communicate more and uh, gain more from my colleagues. That's what uh, I would consider important. And uh, I have, uh, that's what I, I keep. And what is your takeaway? Well, my takeaway, two things I would say. One uh, uh, concerns this uh, expectation gap uh, between uh, the market needs and, and the skills of translators, so which we saw it's not only typical of the translation industry, but actually applies to, to many other, uh, other sector. And uh, we asked yesterday in a, in a session, okay, who is responsible for bridging this gap? And uh, what came out was indeed, uh, it's a joint uh, responsibility. It's a joint responsibility between universities on one side, translators themselves uh, who should take responsibility for their own uh, learning and, and development, language service providers and professional associations. So it's really the, the, the all actors of, of the industry together who can, uh, can, can, can bridge this gap. And I think during these two days we heard uh, a lot of positive uh, examples, uh, constructive stories of cooperation and uh, and a collaboration among all these stakeholders. We also heard uh, some concerns, uh, some worries, in particular about uh, status of the profession, recognition, the relation with machines, just to mention, uh, mention a few. But uh, I think that all in all, uh, the, the, the direction to go is that one of, of cooperation. And what I can say uh, as, a, as a representative of DG Translation is that uh, we will be there with the Translating Europe, with the forum and with the workshops in the, in the member states to support this cooperation and this joint uh, responsibility uh, to work uh, in this direction. That, so that's my first takeaway. And uh, the second one, as, uh, rather as a communicator and a staff member of the European Commission, I would like to go back to what uh, Commissioner Oettinger said yesterday. I enjoyed very much the comparison he made uh, about um, translation as a, as a way to communicate with citizens and with uh, consumers, as a, as a means to build trust, uh, transparency, and ultimately uh, acceptance of, of Europe. And, uh, and this in, in a world which is increasingly uh, globalized, but uh, not less multilingual because of that. So this was uh, my uh, second takeaway uh, from, uh, from the two days. And now I would uh, like to ask this question to the audience. Uh, so I think the poll uh, um, is there. What is your main takeaway after the two, the two days? You can uh, use uh, a slide for this. Maybe we can have the question, Lukas, on the screen. Okay, but I see there is someone in the, on the, in the floor. Please share your thought and your takeaway. Well, thank you very much for this conference. And um, I'd like to warn the English booth as I may switch to German in case I'm getting emotional about the topic, which I certainly <laughs> will. Um, I have learned um, that it is very important to remind ourselves that it is us taking decisions um, about how much to, which, uh, to what extent we will be guided by machines. I would like to uh, give you an example. 
which sounds, um, which might be a bit of a criticism, but um, it's not personal, but it's rather on the format of this conference, Slido. Um, I cannot, and now I would like to switch to German. <laughs> Thank you. Ich finde es eine sehr schlechte... I think that it's actually a very uh, bad uh, habit to have something like Slido at a conference like this. I think it really is only a distraction from what should be an intensive, uh, significant discussion. I don't think that you have to do everything that you can do. And if I can come back uh, to the important question, which I think we need to address, uh, which is this. As of when is a technology useful and as of what point could you do something much better if you didn't have this technology to hand? Now, I think that uh, it's quite easy uh, to use the internet, which is, is great to a certain extent, but it is good if you can access the internet at an event such as this, as long as that is not at the expense uh, of the actual event itself. And I think it was at the expense, uh, expense of uh, the uh, conference and what was being said there. I find this irritating. I find sometimes the, the world irritating. And I wonder whether there's anybody else in the room who shares this impression with me, whether I'm old fashioned, even though I'm only 33 years old. Uh, perhaps I am old fashioned, my approach. But I think. I think that we should uh, remember and ask ourselves time and time again, is this actually of any use to us, this device which has been developed? And if not, we have to have the courage and the uh, human awareness to say, no, we should decide to invest our time and our attention to something else rather than just these devices which have no use to us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, for sharing your uh, your thought on that. Uh, is there any other takeaway? Any other remark uh, that uh, someone would like to to bring to the floor? I see a hand at the very yeah at the bottom of the of the room. Thank you for that. Um, just a quick question. Over the past two days, I've heard a lot of mention of quality management, quality managers. And I want to know if this is a step up from the reviser and from the act of revision itself, because I have not heard of quality managers before in the translation profession. So I really want to know if it's just another name for the reviser or if it's an additional function. Okay. Well, I think that this remains uh, unanswered. Uh, <laughs> But uh, thank you for raising uh, this. I think our objective was really to create uh, a an opportunity for all of you to, to share ideas, uh, develop a new concepts, uh, share experience, maybe create a new cooperation, learn from each other, raise questions. Uh, uh, we did not uh, for sure have the ambition to provide answers to all of that, but really to create the forum and the platform for, for allowing this, uh, uh, this uh, mutual learning. So this was uh, really our, our objective. I hope we manage in this. I can take just one last uh, the gentleman over there. Merci, merci Thank you very much. I'd just like to extend my congratulations to you on using Slido. I'm British, I'm English, uh, I'm 57. I've been uh, working as a translator, interpreter for 37 years now, and I think that without uh, technology, we would uh, not have colleagues in the booth to interpret. So I think we have to keep uh, in step with technology and not be afraid of it. And I'd like to thank the Commission for organizing this conference. Okay. Thank you for this. Uh, concerning the use of, of the Slido application, we are also experimenting and we wanted to try out something new. So we are very grateful for all the comments and feedback that you will be able to give us. Also in the feedback form, by the way, that you will receive in the next days because our objective is really to improve this, uh, this forum every year. So we cannot do it without testing new formats 
and getting uh, your, your feedback. So thank you for this. And I will nevertheless go back to Slido and ask a very final question. If you have to define Translating Europe uh, 2017, so this, the forum with one word, how would you define it? Just one word, one adjective to give us a bit the, 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 the feeling, the pulse of uh, what the forum was for you these two days. That's to, to end on a positive note, of course. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I, I know that the, there are some more people who wanted to take the floor, but uh, I'm afraid we have really, really to close uh, to close this session here. So um, I have a few people I would like to thank uh, at the end of, uh, of of this forum. So first of all, uh, all of you for. Uh, participating, for being so active, so interactive, so enthusiastic, for following in the room, online, so you have been uh, really uh, very, very precious for, uh, for the forum. I would like to thank uh, all speakers and chairs uh, for being uh, an inspiring source of ideas uh, during the, the two days. The presenters of the poster sessions for sharing your, your stories. The interpreters, of course. <laughs> Our colleagues, interpreters, who have been up to the expectations as, as usual. And uh, last but not least, I would like to, to thank the team who has been in charge of organizing this forum, so my team. Uh, tireless, invisible hands who have been working for months behind the scenes to make all this happen. So a big, big thank you to all of you and in particular to Laura.